When my co-host Corey Wall said these words, <laughs> people, we are in the Karis Lesurgence. <laughs> he was spot on. We're in the midst of watching the resurgence, or lesurgence, if you will, of Karis Levert, who is undeniably having the best month of his career while donning the whining gold. Since March 1st, the start of what we are now referring to as the lesurgence, he is averaging 14.5 points, 3.9 rebounds, 3.9 assists, and more importantly, completing over 50% of his field goals, including a scorching 47.1% from three-point range. The best part? He's done most of his damage off the bench as the team's sixth man, scoring in double figures six times in eight games as a reserve this month. You have to imagine this was the role the team envisioned for him when they made the decision to move him to the bench, and he's thriving in it now. But the crazy thing is, Levert has quietly been having one of the most productive and impactful seasons of his career despite the counting stats being down. Offensively speaking, he is averaging just 12 points per game on the season, but when you consider that he is taking the third lowest shot attempts of his career at 10.1 per game, and the fact that he has greatly altered the types of shots he's willing to take to fit the flow of the game and players he's surrounded by, it helps put things into perspective. Over 39% of his total shots are coming from three-point range, with 2.8 of those coming off of catch and shoot opportunities. He has managed to sink over 38.4% of these shots. This alludes to just how much of an off-ball threat he has become and has started to render him a must-play down the stretch of games and a key reason he is seeing north of 27 minutes per game as the team's primary option off the bench. When the average fan thinks of Karis LeVert, they might see a player who is a score-first guard who must have the ball in his hands in order to be truly effective. And while that has never truly been the case for him, it's an understandable opinion. In prior seasons, he was asked to do a lot more of the heavy lifting as a primary or secondary option, and it showed us his usage rate routinely stayed in the mid-20s for five straight seasons. That has changed this season as the Cavaliers have asked him to transition into much more of an off-ball role than he ever had been used to in the past. Cleaning the glass has his usage rate at his lowest since his rookie season at 20.3%. This is largely because he sees such a large chunk of his time out on the court with one or both of Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, who typically operate as the primary ball handler. Of the five most used lineups Cleveland has deployed to date, he is present in all but one and Mitchell has been in each. Now don't get me wrong, there are definitely times in which Levert has the ball in his hands with opportunities to facilitate, but the opportunities aren't as flush as they used to be, especially since the return of Ricky Rubio. When he does get the chance to handle the rock, he makes some of the best passes you'll see from any Cavalier. He is currently ranked within the 91st percentile in assist percentage and the 89th percentile in assist to usage rate. He truly looks comfortable dealing the ball, especially when dumping it off to the bigs. Hornets lead by one. Karis LeVert leaves it for Mobley. Let the ball handler use you as opposed to you making that extra effort to try to free him up. Great pass. For Evan Mobley, give the assist to Karis Levert. Or kicking it out to a wide open shooter on the perimeter. Look how small Cleveland is right now. That's a good pass by Levert. Somehow found Stevens, who hits a three. Now Levert on the wing. Osman. Oh. All because he made that shot up the window. He started yeah, feeling good about himself. Yeah. I would say he got off to a slow start shooting the ball the first couple of games. He's also one of the league's better rebounding guards off the bench, ranking 14th among reserve guards in that category as he's grabbed 3.5 as a reserve, and 4 per game since the start of March. It's an aspect of his game that is rarely mentioned but has helped generate extra possessions offensively or put an end to the opponent's possession as a defensive rebounder. Perhaps the most overlooked and underappreciated aspect of his game has been his work as a defender both on and off ball. Prior to the start of the 2022-23 campaign, Levert had never really been viewed as an above-average defender, but he had always had the tools in the proverbial shed to become one. As of recording this, Levert ranks 19th in the entire NBA in defensive win shares. Hell, NBA.com lists his defensive rating at 107.8 on the season, and he's done that in large part due to the discipline he's shown on that end of the court. Despite coming off the bench, he is 4th on the team with 10.5 defended field goals per game. And while he's by no means a lockdown defender, he can more than hold his own on all ball scenarios. He's managed to hold a guy like DeMar DeRozan to 8 of 19, which is 42.1%, 
across four matchups this season. And Pascal Siakam, one of the game's better fours to four of 11, 36.4% in the same amount of games. Although he has wing size at 6'6", he's a much better defender of guards than forwards. In nearly 480 minutes worth of defensive assignments spent against guards, the Vert has held them to 43.9% from the field compared to roughly 274 minutes worth of matchups against forwards with a field goal percentage of 54.7%. He is clearly more effective defending guards. He isn't a perfect off-ball defender, but he makes great use of his length and can be a menace when playing the passing lanes as his 1.9 deflections per game rank third on the team behind the star duo of Garland and Mitchell. And since the start of the resurgence, he actually ranks 20th in the entire NBA in this category. He hustles as much as anyone on the roster. And now we have arrived at the biggest criticism of Levert, and that is his shot making. From October through February, he completed just 41.1% of his attempts from the field, including 36% from distance. He missed a ton of open looks and was atrocious from his normally reliable mid-range area. This appeared to sap his confidence, which was probably best highlighted by him having a six-game stretch from February 11th through February 26th, where he only took 3.8 total attempts per game and made 39.1% of his looks. Things just weren't clicking for him, but despite that, Cleveland stuck by him and he is rewarding their patience with him with excellent play off the bench as of late. Much of this is due to the fact that he has taken over 39% of his shots from distance with over 68% of his makes being assisted upon. That puts him in the 92nd percentile during this 10 game stretch. He has been effective on both catch and shoot triples as well as pull up threes. The mid-range jumpers are decreasing in volume and that's definitely a good thing considering he's only managed to complete 32% of his shots from that area on the season. It's just not a reliable shot right now so he's way better off moving away from them. And since he shares so much of his time with at least one of the starting guards on the floor, it's paramount that he capitalizes on each attempt he gets when on the floor. With his recent play, it's no wonder why the Cavs are reportedly interested in re-signing Levert. With a strong finish to the season and a big showing in the postseason, Karis Levert could be in for another lucrative payday. 